Hello everybody, welcome to another Arkham Horror the Card Game new player deck guide. Today we're going to be talking about the next investigator that I've randomly chosen uh, for the investigator starter decks is Stella Clark, the survivor. Yeah, I thought we were going to order because we started with the blue one, but absolutely not. No, no, I randomly, I just <laughs> rolled the dice and said, Stella, you're the winner today. Um, so before we get into the great details, uh, how this is working is uh, we recommend, uh, actually Travis recommends, and I'm seconding that recommendation, is when you first get this deck, play it out just as it comes out of the box and just worry about upgrading from in within the box. If you're just starting and you want to just kind of like play around with Stella, just like the deck, just go for it. After that, okay. we have a little Brent, deck can list you also here. support this? As Bryn's like, no, I don't no. support it. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty fine out of the box. So. Um, after that, Travis has made a little deck here that has some minor changes, which we will get to those changes in a second. Um, and then after that, we have um, recommendations from each cycle to what you could add into this deck to make it just a little bit more exciting or fun or different build styles that you can go with. It just uh, push you in the right direction. Exactly. And um, we also have, uh, we, with the core set, we recommend that you have two core sets. Uh, this one actually, it actually comes with a lot of good stuff. The only thing you're really missing is a Lucky, but like the red deck is pretty jam-packed for it. Yeah, I kind of don't understand why I didn't, I think on one hand, I do understand why I didn't come with Lucky, but at the same time, like why I could really use two more copies of Lucky. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, yeah, actually, can you please just print more Luckies for me, please? Yeah. Um, so, before we get to the changes in the deck, let's first talk about Stella. So, Stella has 8 health and 8 brain. Um, and She's three pick. Uh, she has then 3 brain, uh, 2 book, 3 fist, and 4 foot. After you fail a skill test, you may take an additional action during your turn this round limit once per round. So, if you mess up, don't worry about it. You gotta try again. Try, try again. Um, then her Elder Sign effect is plus one. You may instead choose to automatically fail the skill test to heal one damage and one horror. Her special is uh, neither rain nor snow, uh, and it comes with three copies of it in your deck. It the card is insane, actually. Oh yeah, it's incredible. Three it wild you get symbols. You pass a skill test unless you in like, and even if you draw the auto fail, you just. Don't worry I mean, about like it. you fail, but like you don't get chunked by whatever you're doing. Yeah, it just cancels all effects. It's it's pretty. It's really strong. Um, her personal weakness is Called by the Mists. Put Called by the Mists into play in your threat area. After you initi initiate a skill test with a difficulty of four or higher, take one damage, two actions, discard it. Pretty, pretty, pretty soft. Like, just get rid of it, or, like, just get rid of it. Just, how about that? Just get rid of it. Easy. Yeah, that's a, if you're new to the game, like, just get rid of it. There's definitely situations where you can ignore it, um, and just, or just, like, muscle through it. And there's some situations where you might try to do that with similar weaknesses, and it doesn't work out, Bryn. But uh, if you're a new player, yeah, just, just bring your two actions, get it out of the way. Yeah, just because it turns out that internal injuries are actually very serious. <laughs> yes, yeah, go get that checked out. Um, one thing as well, you might have heard of something called the taboo list. We recommend uh, playing without it when you're just starting, just play with the cards as printed. I don't think there's much on this list, if anything, but... Oh, no. There, there's, yeah, I guarantee there's use. one card. Key of use, but I actually didn't include no, there's, Key of there's two then. I didn't put Key of use in the... Oh, yeah, and then Drawing Pen. I didn't put Key yeah. of use in the thing, so we'll just get Key of use if you want to play it. It's a good card. Um, Travis, yeah, what changes did you make to the deck? Um, well, we have cut one Scrapper. This is a card that I'm generally, like, I'm impressed with. Um, those kinds of permanents, you have to pay resources to put in play and then pay additional resources to make them better, to do things with them, but... Um, Shave one of those, because also you only ever need one play. Shave one Will to Survive, because Will to Survive level 0 is a lot worse than level 3. Also, it costs 4 resources, and that's a... That's a lot. Yeah, other things to spend money on. And then we cut two copies of uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales, because... Card that I just don't think is super great. Yeah, I think not... it's, it's fine. Uh, it definitely has its place in the star deck, but... There's a lot of things that I really play over it. Like... Lucky. Like Lucky. Or Guts. Yeah. Uh, we'll get Bring to those. That's good. It's your yeah, turn this we'll time. get to those cards. Oh, we'll uh, we'll get to it. It'll be on the thing, right? Yeah, it will be. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> now we'll just kind of go through and cool. point out any specific cards. We're just going to go through the deck. Uh, we're not going to go in too much detail about them for the the card that comes with it. Um, but just uh, these are just all like good cards, and there's some. Um, the Derringer, especially like Stella, is like just teaching you like, hey, don't worry if you fail, and like 
double don't worry if you fail. Like, just don't worry about it. Yeah, like I mentioned in the Nathaniel Cho video, there's a million other people who have done walkthroughs or card reviews of the these decks in particular. I'm sure we'll do our own card review at some point. But uh, if you really want to... I mean, like, the, the deck came with one that you can just read. Yeah. So... Yeah. Why we're, we're just gonna say very similar things. So, yeah, Granny Orn. Um, I just want to talk about her. She's she's really strong and she's really good in this deck. And I think she she's is. she's spicy, especially when we get to the upgraded ones of her. And yeah. she might be, as Bryn says, a mysterious. She could be, she she could be the Raven. Person. She's a tough old bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, other cards here. I I agree with what Travis is saying about Scrapper. Uh. The second one is especially, like, if you have one in play, your second one is literally just, like, a real, like, you're just like, oh, it's a fist or a foot. It's not great. So having just one of is the correct choice. Um, Great your teeth. Although also just kind of, like, the whole thing about Stella is she's she she wants to fail, which is kind of a weird thing as well. Like, for me, it puts up red flags, right? Because I'm like, why would I fail? Like, you could build her to be kind of like her plan is to just like, if you fail, it's okay. Or just be like her ability could just be like a thing that triggers and you're like, okay, that's fine. I'll just not get punished. Um, yeah, like in most, other, a lot of other games, generally things that benefit you when you're doing poorly are not good. Because mm -hmm. then you're already doing poorly. Yeah. Like for example, in a video game called The Bind of Isaac, there's a car, or there's a lot of items that give you effects when you take damage, but those items are considered very bad because if you take damage, you're losing. So yeah. you don't want to do that. Uh, it's a little bit different at Arkham where failing is kind of part of the plan almost. Mm -hmm. Like you're it's gonna going to happen. Out. Yeah, and like still is just like it's okay, and in some cases, it's good. Yeah, like even honestly, like, because um, you can live and learn and grit your teeth on one failed action, right? So, like. Yeah, you could, like, live and learn, grit your teeth, and look what I found all on the same failed action. That seems nice. Right? Yeah. Then yeah. take your extra action, redo the thing, probably pass now because you've got plus two or three or whatever. Right? Yeah. Something I talk about in the, in the write up, which you can find below the video after, uh, in the. It's not the comments, the video description, that's what it is. Sorry, it's my first time plugging this. <laughs> but uh, Stella is a fantastic investigator for new players to play because you can just teach them how to play the game normally, and then when they fail, they have that like bright moment when they're like, oh, it's okay, because then I can do this other good thing even though I failed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of failing, take heart. Hey, that's great. Yeah. I also agree with Travis, the level zero will to survive is very expensive for the effect it has. But if you want it and like one of them, it, you can actually do like something yeah. with that. Uh, we got Lucky. Lucky is like the best red card in the game. And Guts, Bryn, why is I Guts good? I think Resourceful is better than Lucky. I think that's actually fair. I also yeah, think Resourceful yeah, this... is sometimes just a Lucky. Because Resourceful is always good. Whereas Lucky is good most of the time, but sometimes you just have Lucky in your hands, right? Yeah, that yeah is, but if you if you don't play your Lucky, it means you're not failing tests. That is and if you're not fair, failing tests, I, I do think you're Travis, you're an excellent point. And even Scrounge for Supplies, I'd also say, is up there as well for contention. We'll talk about those cards later. but Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, where Lucky really kind <laughs> is uh, for similar... I mean, it's like Guts, but reverse, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Guts is uh, Guts is like quietly one of the best level zero car colorless cards in the game. Mm -hmm. It's only the quiet game will... if you don't listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the game will the game will primarily attack you by making you test brain and then doing bad things to you if you fail, mm -hmm. uh, or by monsters, but like mostly, mostly this way. Yeah. Uh, Guts gives you plus two brain to your test or somebody on your team plus two mm -hmm. brains to their test, and then if you succeed, it just replaces itself. Yeah. Right. Yep. Guts is like a little bit worse than usual uh, because you have neither rain nor snow in your deck and three copies of it. Yes. But I. Guts is still really good. Yeah. And you should play two. <laughs> uh, 
Um, unexpected Courage uh, commits for two wilds, so if you want to just bump something up to get some other health, like, uh, so not some other health, some, just make your tests a bit more concrete. It's a good way, it's another Guts, but it also could be anything else. <laughs> it's also just yeah. like neither Rain nor Snow, but worse. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's why it's not actually in the deck. It's something you could play if you want. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess I also should say we are actually starting the core recommendation. So this was the end of the deck. We are now in just talking about specific cards from the core set. We'll talk about the level zeros from each core set and cycle, as well yeah, as the experience. Yeah, there's not much. Stella, as, a, as Travis was saying, and I think I also said, like, it's, the, this, it's jam-packed. Uh, Will Survive, level three. Uh, very powerful. Uh, until the end of your turn, do not reveal chaos tokens for any skill test you perform. Like, this is more the speed. It's also fast. Uh, I think the original one. Is it fast, too? I hope so. Otherwise, it's yeah. awful. I should it have cut fast, both copies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, this one's really spicy. Like, that's yeah. like where it's... It's the best card we never play because I it's too expensive for Justin and I usually always play the red decks. So I play, I want to play the luckies. Yeah, yeah give me the lucky, please. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no will to survive is fantastic and it's very strong and it feels good to uh, to resolve it. Uh, Travis, why don't you take these guys? Uh, Fire Axe is probably the best level zero red weapon in the game. Um, yeah, the Derringer is pretty sweet too. But yeah, the new Derringer is good, but it does yeah. have uses. Whereas a Fire Axe is never dulled. Yeah, no matter how many heads you cleave with it. Uh, but yeah, just. It's especially good if you don't want to spend your money on other things. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, yeah, just chopping people up. Great. You get plus two per resource spend, which is an insane ratio. And if you have no money, you deal an extra damage. So, uh, the having no money and dealing extra damage is, like, a little bit sketchy in Stella because you want to be playing... Um, Reactions to... You want to have money for, like, your dumb lucks and your... Look what I found and luckies and whatnot. Yeah. But like you can with a little bit of forward thinking, a little bit of luck, you can play around it. Yeah. Um Justin, why don't you tell them about what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, it's like good. you really you really want you else to talk about it. Sure. Uh, so Pete <laughs> Sylvester is a very good ally. Uh he gives you uh foot, and then on his higher level he also gives you brain. In addition, he makes it so that you like never die. <laughs> However, I do think in this deck, Granny Orin is better than Pete Sylvester. But if you want to have the big man on campus, um, he's great. And he'll just make sure that you won't die. Stella has a lot As of survivability we'll later, built why into not both? it. Sorry? As we'll see later, why not both? Yes, as we'll see later, why not both? I mean, yeah, if you can play both, why the heck not, right? Um, but yeah, that's why Pete's good. Uh, upgraded Scrapper is permanent, uh, which is a lot better than having to draw it and then play it. Um, Oh, no. Yeah, it is upgraded scrapper. I'm having a stroke. I was like, wait a minute, what? But yeah, no, that is how it works. Um, I don't really know what else to say about that one. Uh, let's go on to the next ones, which are... Uh... Brent, why don't you take these ones? And look at my uh, Relic Hunter and Charisma combination. Of <laughs> I'm sorry, I do want to interject real quick. There are two distinct archetypes that are represented by the cards in Stella's deck. Uh, some of the higher experience cards that... And there are cards supporting both of them in this recommendation. Those two archetypes are... I mean, the big, the real one that you have to build around is Deja Vu, mm -hmm. which lets you repurchase exiled cards at a reduced cost. Mm -hmm. And so, as a general rule, when you, if you are going to be buying cards like Flair that exile themselves, you want to be purchasing Deja Vu as a priority upgrade. Yeah, upgrade numero uno. Uh, yeah. well, we have I have both of these also at the end once we get through everything and we can kind of just like talk Give a bit about them. Yeah. I just want to give a little bit of context before definitely, we got into it. Definitely. And honestly, like that's what I'm so excited about. I'm so excited to have a new red archetype to build. Like I'm so excited to build the deja vu thing. You're just gonna play uh, Dark Horse again. No, I promise you I won't. <laughs> because the thing is I like Exile as a mechanic, right? But no, the next in-game, in or the next uh, in-person campaign we're going to play is going to be Innsmouth, probably, and you're going to play Silas, and you're going to play Dark Horse. I can't play Silas. I can't play Silas. I want to play someone new. I already played Silas. Besides Silas. No cards, Justin. Silas has to draw extra Innsmouth look cards. Ooh. Silas will have extra... He'll have real support, Justin. 
That is true. <laughs> yeah, well, but what, I, what, his, what his actual signature stuff is. But shouldn't I? I should still have to play someone new, right? Like, I mean, like, blind? I would like it if you play someone new. I mean, I want to. I don't want to play Silas for the first in's mouth. Maybe the second one. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Flare. Um, the Exile went thing with Deja Vu. There's a lot of fun you can do there. Um, Flare actually is, uh, if you don't want to do the Fire Axe, it can actually do some good damage against enemies. You get attack at six and deal three damage. Um, Stella, you're going to kind of fill that role of like the person who fills in the gaps, right? You're not really here to get clues. You're not really healed, here to kill people consistently. And Flare is actually a good option for that. And it also could, if you need to find Granny Orn uh, or the tough old bird that is the mysterious or Raven, Raven, Granny Orn. <laughs> yeah. Or you can take play, uh, allies from your friends, which is always a little bit fun. It's, it's, it's actually very strong if you're playing with Donald Cho as your teammate, especially if you guys have the Dunwich expansion, because you can dig up his, uh, for example, his five-cost uh, brother Xavier. Yeah. yeah. And that benefits both of you. Like, maybe if Donald Cho's hurting on damage, and you need to shore, up, shore that up from Flare will do that for you. I hope you guys are like, I'm serious about this Deja Vu, and I'm taking, I'm like signaling for your allies constantly. I'm like, where are you? Come to me. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, I don't want to play it, but I'm excited to see one of you guys play it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, stroke of Luck. Um, uh, yeah, Just read this up? card again. Like, what the quick. fuck is this? <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. This is great, especially with Deja Vu in that build. It's another Exile card. Yeah. Uh, try and try again after skill this has failed. So this also goes with the other archetype, which we're also going to get to, which is called... What is that one? Practice makes perf... No, not practice makes perf. That's the brim like Quick learner. There it is. Uh, which I am not, by the way. Um, yeah, like, the quick learner archetype is, like, it's basically just Stella's failing archetype. Yes. But yeah. with further support. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so that's just going to help you do that. and makes it so you don't run out of gas. So, like, you uh, you can use it to... Wait a minute. With neither rain nor snow, try, try again. Will you not get the punishment and be able to get neither rain nor snow back in your hand? That sounds right to me. That sounds because that's similar that sounds, to how Salas works. That sounds juicy. That sounds like a good time. Uh, don't quote me on that though, because uh, there's some weird like what is permanent and what isn't like permanent by skill rules. I'm still learning that, trying to crack that code. Uh, Charisma <laughs> and Relic Hunter. Uh, if you want more allies, so if you want to run Granny Orn and Pete Sylvester. Uh, that's a great way of going about it. Relic Hunter is also for accessory slots, which actually is a pretty competitive market in the red side of things. My only regret about this, Justin, is you didn't just actually cut the images in half and glue them together. No, so that's what I did <laughs> at first, and then I thought, like, because they didn't line up, but I'll do that next time it happens, for sure. I'll do that for you, okay? Thank you. Um, who Don't wants to take uh, Path to Carcosa? Uh, I said Resourceful is good, so I will. Sure. So, Resourceful is in contention for the best red card of the game. It commits for one of three symbols, not brain, but like the other ones, so you can you can definitely find use for it. And then if you succeed, you get to return any red card from your discard to your hand. This is very good. If you have Path to Kirkosa, you should put Resourceful in your deck. Yes. You should put Resourceful in all of your red decks. Yes. Um, it's like drawing a card, but you get to pick which one it is. Yeah. It's basically the, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's, it makes it so you can use things like Lucky or, um, Look What I Found again and again and again as well, which is... Yeah, you can just throw them away on whatever, and you're like, how's it get back later? Who cares? Yeah. Or even, like, say, uh, Crypt Chill, uh, has destroyed one of your assets you want, you can just get it back as well. Maybe Granny Orange died. Maybe you yeah. spent your Mysterious Raven. Maybe I, your uh, old Keyring yeah, or Keyring. 18 old, old Derringer Keyring got discarded. Itself, right? So, definitely. Uh, next up, we got... Well, that's the only level 0 red card that's good for Stella. Stella actually soaks up pretty much all of the good level 0 cards for her throughout the cycles uh, into her star deck. Mm -hmm. So, they're pretty sparse on those. But uh, Newspaper, level 2. You get plus two book while investigating if you have zero clues, and then when you investigate, if you succeed, discover you get an extra clue if you have no clues. Yeah. So, Bryn, do you want to run through run through the math real quick on this one that you always bring up when oh. we talk about? 
Uh, so the majority of scenarios that you're going to play have three, three uh, agenda cards that you need to pass. And uh, each one of them will likely require clues, and they will wipe your clues off at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So this is like a one-costed asset that effectively reduces the clue requirement to pass the next uh, the next agenda by two. Uh, and there are there are like there are obviously scenarios where it's bad and scenarios where it's good, but yeah. even in the scenarios where it's bad, it's you can just pitch it for two book. Yeah, dude. There's also even so some cases no where you can like, um, it, you have to spend your clues to progress, and like mm -hmm. newspaper can really shine there. Yeah, they're yeah. like like midnight masks where they're like spend three clues to spawn a dude, and you're like, yeah, I'll do it, and I'll just go pick up two more. Yep. Yes. Newspaper is very strong. There are there are a lot more ways to end up without your clues than it might seem like there are. Yeah. yeah. It should happen at least twice. Yeah, this is one of those cards that we like thought was like mediocre when we saw it, and then Brandon and I tried playing with it a little bit. I don't think Justin's ever played with it. I, I could have, be wrong, but yeah, yeah, okay. We played with it, and we were just like, "This is actually like really good." Yeah, it's, <laughs> this it's happens fantastic. a lot more often than I thought. Uh, um, anyway, next card is an upgraded test of will. This is level one. You have a higher upgraded one, I think, later on or something like that. Uh, this one is again fill. This is the upgrade you want if you're doing the exile archetype. Um, you don't have to make the brain test. You just you just cast the card, and then you have to quote unquote pay experience in between the scenarios to get it back, which you don't actually have to if you have deja vu. So mm -hmm. sweet card. So the last yeah, one yeah. is oh sorry, another the exile version is um, you can test brain three, and if you fail, you exile it. So you don't really if you're doing the deja vu, you don't need to go past level one for that one yeah like i would get i would look at the higher one if you have the extra experience but it's definitely not a priority upgrade yeah and then uh, we got devil's luck this is another exile card and uh, i probably wouldn't play this uh, i mean this one's a tough one uh i don't i don't i don't like it i don't I, think it's I, great I but it's like great. so it's here because it's like perseverance but different mm-hmm Right, and we all agree that perseverance is good. Yeah, yeah. This is this is better than perseverance though, because you don't have to be getting killed by the damage. You can just be like, well, three's a lot. It's also worse than perseverance because it doesn't commit for two brains though. Yes. Yes. No, it, mean... it's it's perseverance but different. That's why it's here. Like it's it, it it's a pretty solid card, and I wouldn't ever feel bad about running it if I was playing the exile archetype. I'd be like, yeah, one experience for this, and give it to me. Yeah, it, this is, you only, like, you don't want to be putting this into your deck when unless you're playing the Deja Vu build. It's just, it's not going to trigger enough to the point where you're going to have, like, that um, Phoenix Down Syndrome from Final Fantasy, where <laughs> you're like, I'm not going to use my good item because I might need it made later, right? Yeah, if I, th I feel like if you're playing this, you need to, like, just give yourself a hard rule. You're like, if I'm going to take two damage between the two stats, like, I'm playing this. Yeah. And like, just accept, like, I'm just going to use it. And that's what Deja Vu allows you to do with Devils. Like, I do think with Devils, luck will improve greatly with, like, in our playgroup, evil, in, in, uh, when playing it with Deja Vu, because you'll be like, okay, I'm just not going to take this damage. It's basically just yeah. like a, a ward of protection that you can buy back for free later. I did not exist since you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but like the, I think the card's pretty good in the archetype. Hey, look who it is! Yeah, it's Perseverance! <laughs> uh, so Perseverance is like uh, Devil's Luck, except it doesn't exile. It's level zero, it has two brain symbols, so it's like a Guts, and it uh, only uh, it cancels damage or horror when it would defeat you, so, um, I mean, it's better than dying, right? Yeah. Uh, I've definitely <laughs> chosen to take damage, and then assigned it to my Investigator card, even though I had other assets in play that could have taken it. <laughs> Yeah. So that I could cancel the damage with my perseverance. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's definitely worth. It's um, definitely worth it to like spend your perseverance than it is to lose your granny orange yes. or 100%. your uh, big yeah. man on campus. Yeah. Uh, cornered. Uh, this is if you want to kind of have like like that red discard and like scavenge as well. It's a good way of doing that, and you get to do skill values for uh, increase all your skill values for a skill test. Limit once per test as well. Um, I think I talked about this in the little thing, but uh, the, the write-up. But the reason this card is here is because it makes 
your look what I founds, your dumb lucks, and your oopses into it makes them much more flexible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you don't have to. You can just use them for something instead of like sitting there waiting for the perfect opportunity to come up. Yeah, because sometimes they just don't, right? And like, yeah, that, that's a big issue that we generally have with those cards. But playing corner to your deck really makes you not care so much about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, corner just basically says any card that's in your deck that you don't want to play right now, it's an unexpected card. Yeah, you know, you got Granny Orm uh, playing, you draw your Mysterious Raven, get him out of here. You got uh, Rabbit's yeah. Foot and play, you draw your second copy, get it out of here. It also serves a neat piece of utility if you're playing the the Exile deck, where if you draw cards like the Devil's Luck and you're like, well, I'm pretty healthy and I don't really want to play this, Yep, you can just use it for something else. Yeah. Definitely. You're ready to go on to try, try again, Justin. There's so much more depth to this card. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's but like I have nothing to say about try, try again. It's like the other one, but worse. <laughs> like kind of. There's yeah, an argument. Yeah. So like, how many, how often are you going to be using try, try again more than three times in a scenario, right? Uh, I think with Stella, more often than not. Sorry, I mean, like, but is that worth two experience less, or like? I, sorry, yeah, I guess a more could, reasonable way of representing it is. Ones instead of the level three. Yeah, would you rather play two level ones and save an experience and do it six times in a scenario, or buy, play one level three and have a harder time finding it, but be able to do an unlimited number of times? Honestly, I would just do it the three, by the three. It's red, you, you I'll have that, th- like it's, it's the thing with red is like, the experience isn't as important, right? Like, I would, I know you guys might not, dis- like, might not agree with that, but that's how I look at it. No, no, I don't. I don't have strong feelings either way. I don't play with red cards. So I definitely wouldn't play an archetype that relies on me playing poorly. Yeah, but, no, um... I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like with Stella, uh, like she is. No, so like, I, I... I genuinely think that's actually a personal preference sort of thing, mm-hmm. and uh, also a card availability sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely as well. Um, but yeah, it's just it's upgrading in red is is strange. I. I I think try and try again is good in Stella, and I mean, if you st- like, there's nothing wrong with stopping at the level one ones, right? It also depends on what else you you think it, you're trying to prioritize, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Alter Fate next. This card looks so you're like you look at this card, and then you're like, man, one money, fast, play, kind of whenever I basically whenever I want. And you need to discard any non weakness treasury card that's attached to non elite enemy. You're like, that sounds insane. And then you look at the cards that are non-weakness treacheries that are not attached to the enemies, and you think it's bad, but then you play with it, and it goes back to being really, really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah so. it's just like not having, like having your fighter be able to, like that, that, uh, Frozen in Terror, whatever it's called. Frozen in Fear, yeah. Frozen in Fear, yeah. I knew there was some alliteration or something. Just gone. You know, all that garbage from the circle undone, just gone. Uh-huh. You just don't have to care about it. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of cards, particularly in the later cycles, that want to stack up to three of them in play. So with Alter Fate, you can just be like, nah. Also, you can't do it until Toot. like yeah. until you uh, until you shuffle the the deck back and yeah. we find it again. Yeah. Yeah. Ironically, this card's like actually pretty mediocre. No, no, this actually, I, I take that back immediately. This card's pretty good in the Forgotten Age. Yeah. Especially in the layer campaigns where they're like, there's a hole in the ground. You're like, no, yeah. there isn't. <laughs> Anyone who stays here is going to be poisoned and this this stupid idiot can't move. Like, yeah. Well, either he could move or there's no poison here. I don't care which. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right, now we're on the circle undone. Old baby. Drawing thin's pretty good. Drawing thin? <laughs> this card's freaking broken. Uh, Justin, we're not trying to push him into playing certain cards. This card's just pretty good. Don't listen to him. <laughs> just because it may cost two experience per copy now. Yeah. Wow, and it's almost like uh, <laughs> you don't care about failing one test a turn. Yeah, like... Play with this card, put it in your style deck if you have it, and, and just play with it. Just use it every turn. Yep. You'll understand how good it is, and either you will up the difficulty of your game, or, I mean, like, you might just continue to crush, because... 
I don't think that the average person who plays Arkham games is there to crush a game. They don't get enjoyment for that. They enjoy the challenge of it. Yeah, yeah. So either you're gonna you're gonna crush it once and then up your difficulty, or you're gonna play this card costing experience. So yeah, it's insane. It's yeah, and it's just like it's somehow like even better as well. Like it's 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 great. And like with Stella, she's like like licking her lips. She's like, I'm hungry. Yeah, like I under so I don't. This card should be in Stellar's starter deck, but I understand why it's not. Yes, I yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> um, we got some alcohol, Tennessee Sour Mash, both uh, its basic and its upgraded version. Uh, it helps you with uh, treachery cards, which puts you up to five, so it's like a guts that you can spend some supplies and you can start hitting people with them. Um, yeah, yeah. The level zero is like two guts, and the level three is worth is like three guts. Yeah. And then you get a punch. You get to beat someone with it as well. Bring the yeah. glass overhead. Yeah, which also yeah, evades. Very good it. card. Very solid. Yeah. Um, guiding yeah, the, spirit. The upgraded one evades for free if you succeed the attack. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, just just good cards. Uh, guiding spirit gives you more book, which sitting up to three is not really like great. I mean, with your newspaper, that puts you up to five, which is which is nice. Um, and uh, the big thing about though is that this guy will do great in the deja vu deck. He is like a. Uh, um, He's basically like just Mr. like Potterson. a Pete or Mr. Potterson, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, I think I would actually rather play this guy than Mr. Potterson, assuming you have him in the Deja Vu deck. I agree. Yeah, but one thing that's actually kind of funny about this card is it's like if you're trying to get clues, it's actually kind of worse than not having him because if you draw a minus three chip or your three book, you can't play. Look what I found. But if you're just at your base two and you fail, you can. Yeah. Uh, no like it's it's still the same right like either either the location has two or less shroud in which case you always fail by two or less or the location has higher than two shroud in which case if you draw the minus three at three oh no you're, yeah, yeah you know, you're right, right. I'm, three, right i'm stupid uh, you're right <laughs> no i think this guy spirit does not see enough play mostly because justin plays the right cards and he plays fight guys or minty fan who has an insane book already but i think this card is actually very very good yeah. One money for three brain soak and plus one to a stat is just like, whoo. Yeah, yeah so it's pretty solid. Card. The only downside to it is that uh, he dies you know, first. Yeah. Although this is uh, like so weird thing about this. If you have other assets in play that can take sanity, that sanity, them like that horror does not have to be placed on the ghost. Yeah, you get charisma, yeah, right? Dying so, yeah, spirit. You, and then Pete's and the there. Big man. And then yeah, like you your the your man. ghost is there for literally ever. Yeah, your ghost will <laughs> your ghost will stick around forever, even if you got like a teddy bear or whatever. Like, yep. You know, I'll keep your ghost around. Oh no, Mr. Potterson does have an exile upgrade in this set as well. So. <laughs> yep. Um, last in the circle and done, we got you catastrophe, which is uh, when you reveal a chaos token that would reduce your skill value to zero, including the fu token. Uh, you treat it as a blue, which you could then choose to automatically fail again just to flex <laughs> on the game. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, this card's great. You're going to be failing a lot anyway in this one, so you Catastrophe is pretty good in Stella. Uh, her uh, star effect isn't as strong as some of the others, but it's still just, like, you're going to be failing. This can be, like, if you want to just make sure it happens, right? Like, you, not that you fail, that you pass, right? Uh, Unfortunate Fate... Uh, stops you from advancing the agenda which uh is a good time and it also exiles so if you're playing deja vu that's super spicy because you can buy it back as part of the three you get from that can you say effectively less ancient evils yep because i can uh, so I, I can and it's what i'm thinking <laughs> yep uh now we're going to get to some really strong cards here in the dream eater cycle well specifically the level zero one scrounge for supplies travis why don't you take this All right, never mind. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Scratch for Supplies. Uh, it's, this kind of falls into the resourceful camp where it's another card that you want from your deck. Uh, only a level zero card specifically, but there's a lot of very strong level zero cards. Uh, Lucky, or in this, uh, in this case, Look What I Found, is really good in Stella. Like, that's one that you want to be able to cycle over and over and over again. A dead Granny Orn if you need to, but mostly it allows you to just grab the things that you need for this moment, which is really good in Stella. You can use your scrounge and supplies to get back your resourceful. To get back your scrounge for supplies. Have to get plus back. one to a non-brain test forever, oh baby. Oh baby. 
Um, <laughs> can it get stronger? Um, Jessica Hyde is a fixed um, Pete. Speaking of stronger. Yeah, and then also uh, she gives you four fists, which actually makes it so that you could fight pretty... Pretty good at taking and cleaning up the small messes. Like, Stella's not meant to be your fighter, but Jessica can make her get there. Um, and this also makes it so that you have a little damage soak as well continually, which is really nice. Yeah, she just makes it all a little more comfortable. Um, if you like cats, which Travis says here, fan favorite cat action. Miss Doyle is cute for that. <laughs> Uh, is this another way to sell casual players? People who haven't played the game on playing Stella is you can be like, she makes the game not so hard, but also you can play with these cats. And they're like, especially I'm if in. you have a significant other, they'll be like, wow, I like yeah. cats. Uh, nothing left to lose refills is, refills your resource and your hand. It does not exile though; it just gets removed from the game. So if it's a little bit worse, but still like a very solid card for just refueling on everything. Yes, yeah. Especially nice, like, say you pay, you play, like, Granny Orn, which puts you to zero, and then you can just play Nothing Left to Lose to get five and fill your hand up, right? Yeah, like, this deck's actually, like, a little bit sketchy in its economy. You have lots of events that cost two money. You have lots of assets you want to be playing. Mm -hmm. And Nothing less, Left to Lose is just... It's like a super emergency cash. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nightmare Bobble, which I've actually not played. Card is so good. Oh, Dream Parasite. I did not get that included. That is my mistake. Let me just quickly look. Uh, Dream Parasite is a skill that gives you negative two wild symbols. And when you make a test, you have to commit it. And then it's like, if you f don't, or if you fail the test after you commit it, you take two brain damage or something like that. Yeah. Um, but you just, you don't have to shuffle those in until you use it. And... You only shuffle. You only use it when you draw the tentacle, but it's like you just get to ignore the tentacle three times. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That seems that seems fun. Being able like to say no to the game. No, it's no? so good. Yeah, I think that's one of the bear cards that come out of that cycle. Yeah, it's. I it's I like so the good. red play with the with the bad token. It's it's yeah, fun. It's like you catastrophe that you don't have to keep up the money for every turn, kind of. Yeah. And honestly, like um, the dream parasite is really soft too, right? Because it's not like something like Silas's, where if you pass, it goes back into your hand. You just take one damage and one horror. And as we see with Stella, like you just slam neither rain or snow into that. Either you pass and you don't care, or you fail and you don't care. Yeah, it's it's like it's super super great and like. I mean, like, worst case scenario with Nightmare Bobble, you don't draw the red token. And congratulations, you haven't drawn the red token, right? Like, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> You've done it. <laughs> uh, Lucid Dreaming. Uh, this one, if you need to get specific things, it's a good for it. What does Travis have in the writing for? This one's actually a little bit better for Stella than other Investigators, I think, because she's so limited in the cards she has that helps her do things where... And it also allows her to be a lot more flexible. Where you only, if you want to fight enemies, you really only have the 18 Derringer from the from her set. You only, if you get clues, you only really have the old key ring, yeah. asset wise. Anyway, of course you have your events and stuff, but uh, this lets you adapt sort of to uh, better to the game. Where maybe your monster fighter got their machete discarded early or is having trouble finding their weapon, you can go dig up another 18 Derringer and you can. You know, hold the team over until they get their shit together. Or maybe this is one of those uh, scenarios where there's like, you know, maybe you're playing uh, Museum 1 from Dunwich where there's only one enemy, so fighting is not such a big deal, but you really need to power through those clues. Go dig up a second copy of Old Keyring. Yep. Maybe you've taken a bunch of damage, Granny Orn's in danger of dying. Gra Go grab, grab another her copy. twin, Granny Orn. Yeah. Um, Worst case scenario, like you go choose a card that's in your play area, or cards in your hand. Like yeah, worst case scenario, pay one, go grab another copy of neither rain or snow, and just feel that much more safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even like if yeah, yeah, there's just tons you can do with it. I I agree. She's kind of like, Stella Clark is kind of like I can do everything, and I'm just here to help. And this makes her just have her toolbox be more consistent. Yeah, she can do everything, and she's very safe about it. But she does everything like. A little bit bad. Yeah. 
Uh, and then these are the two cards that we were talking about earlier, so just uh, for reference for them. Uh, they're both permanents as well. Uh, if you're doing the Deja Vu build, um, just uh, you're going to want to make that your priority. Yeah, you want to pick up those powerful exile cards that you can reuse, and don't you're not going to be afraid to to use them. Like just keep pump them into wherever they're relevant. Yeah, like especially like especially the ones that are like one experience. It makes it so that you can get three of those back for free between each scenario. Like that's yeah. really strong because like the thing about these exile cards is that they're you have to rebuy them when you don't have to do that. Like you do have to pay for them to get them into your deck. So like. You have to pay five for Deja Vu, right? And then three for, for example, like a, um, Devil's Luck and then two Flares. And you won't start seeing that immediately, but it makes it so that you can have a bit of a security and then start spending your uh, resources on more Exile cards, your experience. They're still pretty comfortable, though. In most scenarios, I think, like, the first scenario gives you, like, you're real estate and get, like, six, five to seven experience, somewhere yeah. in there. You know, you get five, maybe pick up your Exile cards first, and then just try to not play them unless you have to for the next scenario to get your Deja Vu. Yep. Um, or you just pick up your Deja Vu. Red cards level zero are really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get Deja but, Vu and then buy, like, some one-cost ones. Like, probably, like, you want to start aggressive. Like, Flare's a good place to start, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, for the Quick Learner, uh, Quick Learner actually, like, requires you to plan your turns quite a bit. And while it is very strong for the failing archetype, I think, Stella's sort of home archetype, I wouldn't recommend it for the new players, considering that, especially considering that we talked about Saul Clark being a very good option for new players, just because the amount of, like, it requires a little bit more bookkeeping and forward thought. And I think that those newer players are going to be better off just upgrading the other cards that are actually in their deck, just picking up better copies of granny orn and look what i found or whatever yeah i agree with that but it does make that it, it gives the archetype like a like real longevity you know yeah definitely definitely uh so that's stella clark if there's any cards that you think we may have missed talking about for stella or you recommend for new players to check out uh let us know in the comments below now travis choose a number between one and three three uh, we're going to be talking next about Winifred Habamuck. Damn it. Good choice, Travis. <laughs> I don't like green cards. <laughs> <laughs> Justin got you good. Yep. He did. We'll Justin just pulls week, one in front uh, of the box. Yeah. <laughs> Pick it over to one, three. <laughs> yeah. I, had three I had three Winifred Habamucks on my deck. Yeah, my desk, yeah. <laughs> um, so Check we'll see you guys next week when we talk about Winnie. See you then. And as always, GG's.